progress report from the ministry and from the NPA with regards to two issues. One is the optimum mine issue. Um, and then the other one is the Lily uh, mine uh, disaster. As to how far are the issues, uh, the report and the presentation was circulated by the NPA uh, very early on. Uh, we have gone through the report. It would, I, I think it would be important if you can just highlight the important issues because it seems to be straightforward. And then after that, uh, we would uh, welcome uh, clarity, uh, uh, clarity second questions and the way forward. Uh, can I take this opportunity to welcome uh, the Deputy Minister to, to make his uh, remarks? Uh, Chair, look, I'm, I'm just um, accompanying the NPA to this meeting. It's, it's, it's basically their report. Um, the Minister unfortunately wasn't able to, uh, to attend or isn't able to attend due to other commitments. Uh, so I'm, I'm just coming together with the NPA uh, and would want to hand over to them to advocate to Cock. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, Deputy Minister uh, Advocate Dukok. Um, thank you very much, uh, Chair, Honourable Members. Um, let me introduce Advocate Omar Rabaji. Um, is, she, is she present um, on the platform at this stage? Advocate Rabaji. Good morning, Advocate Dukok. Yes, I'm present on the platform. I've put both my camera. I've put my camera on. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Um, so you can put your camera off again for, for, the, for while we do the introductions. Um, Chairperson uh, and honorable members, um, uh, the matter under consideration in relation to the optimum um, mine um, is currently being managed by the asset forfeiture unit of the National Prosecuting Authority. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to come and brief um, uh, the members of the Portfolio Committee regarding uh, the status of this particular matter um, and where exactly uh, we are as the state in terms of dealing with the issues arising out of the litigation that has taken place. So we propose, Chair, that we deal uh, with the progress report first in relation to the issues around the optimum mine. And this is being dealt with uh, by uh, the AFU. The head of the AFU is Advocate Rabaji uh, Resetaba. Um, and uh, she has uh, prepared um, the inputs relevant to the matter that has been submitted uh, to the Portfolio Committee. When the MPA received the letter from the Portfolio Committee, uh, we immediately prepared a detailed memorandum in relation to the matter as a report uh, to the Minister of, of Justice. Uh, that report was uh, sent off about, uh, I would imagine about around about the 17th of November uh, to the Minister. So uh, subsequent to that, we've been requested to brief uh, the uh, Portfolio Committee. The brief to the Portfolio Committee is based on the report that we had submitted to the, to the Minister. And I will then request, with your permission, I'd request Advocate Rabaji to please uh, take us in a summary form through the report uh, for the purposes of the presentation. We do not have a prepared pre presentation. We have submitted a formal letter uh, to the Portfolio Committee, and I assume, Chair, that it has been circulated to the members, to all the members present. So with your permission, we will proceed with the first part, which is the optimum mine. Thereafter, I will deal with the issues regarding uh, uh, the other mine, uh, the Lily mine. I'll, I will deal with, the, with those issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, Advocate Cook. Thank you very much, Chairperson, Honorable uh, members, as well as the Deputy Minister for the opportunity. Thank you for Advocate Dukok for handing over to me. Chairperson, I've prepared what I think is a brief report, uh, which explains the, um, the status of the case before the court. So first point that we make, uh, Chairperson and honorable members, is that the NPA is well aware of the fact that 
There are many people who've lost their jobs at, at the mine and they're hopeful to be reemployed as soon as possible. We, we have met and personally I've received um, delegations who came to protest at the NPA um, premises at VGM in Pretoria regarding um, the preservation application or the freezing order that was uh, launched by the NDPP. So our objective really is to finalize um, the four future proceedings, have the curator uh, sell the mine as speedily as possible, uh, of course at market value, so that the operations can start as soon as possible and as many people can then be employed back at the mine. So um, this is a highly contested matter, Chairperson. So there's various forms of litigation as, as I've um, explained in, in the document that we've sent. So, and that's what is going to delay the forfeiture application. Chairperson um, and honorable members, we as the NDPP launched um, the proceedings in December 2020 papers on um, the current own, owner of the mine, which is Templar, as well as uh, the business rescue practitioners. We found the, the, the mine under business rescue. And as the Corsatu letter said, uh, it's been under rescue proceedings since um, 2018. So we launched uh, three years later and we obtained two freezing orders on the 23rd of March, uh, which is two days before uh, the business rescue practitioners were going to implement a business plan uh, that we say in NPA was literally going to hand over the mine back to the Guptas for literally one rent. So we presented uh, a section 61 uh, certificate and I've made the point somewhere in, in the document, which is a document that the NDPP files to um, the deputy judge president of the high court where the matter is going to be had, that this is a matter of public interest and it must be dealt with expeditiously. So we agreed a timetable with um, the high court in terms of when the other parties that were served, the business risk practitioners, as well as the, the creditor, the biggest creditor to the mine, which is Templar, must file their papers and when should the rest of the parties uh, uh, file in the heads of argument and when we wanted judgment. We're quite specific in the section 61 uh, certificate that we want judgment before the 25th of March and we're able to, to obtain that. So the rest of the parties were saved. It wasn't an ex parte application before the court, but uh, the matter was in a, in a, manner, in a way exped expeditiously handled by, by, by the court. So um, the law requires that within 90 days of obtaining um, a preservation application, you must file for future proceedings. So we filed on time um, on the 1st of July and on the 2nd of July on the parties respectively. And um, so what then happened is that the parties, uh, the other parties that we have, have, have um, served and uh, lodged appeals uh, against our freezing order. Uh, I must pause here Chairperson, to, to indicate that the prevention of organized crime does not uh, make provision for an, for, for, for an appeal process between the freezing order and, and the forfeiture order. So nonetheless, um, the, uh, the leave to appeal was granted and the appeal is yet to be had. Um, the curator bonus, the curator was then appointed over and above the fact that there are business rescue practitioners who are running the day-to-day -day operations of the mine. So the, the curator is appointed to have an oversight role uh, over the BRPs so that value of the mine is not eroded. So the property must be preserved until for future. That's a very important point, Chairperson. 
Um, moving along um, on page 18, we now had um, Tegeta, who was not party to the proceedings. Remember the mine is under, um, it's under, it's, it's, it's in the hands of a, a creditor and business rescue practitioners. Now Tegeta enters the fray and say that they want to oppose the granting of a forfeiture order by the NDPP. Um, Chairperson, um, we, we, we have opposed this before in the Free State case in another Gupta related uh, matter, the Nulani matter, where we opposed um, the directors of any of the Gupta companies. And in this particular case, the Tegeta directors from being party to the proceedings. Um, we have succeeded in, in the Nulani case in, in the sense that the SEA have said that um, they can't enter the proceedings in that matter as well. But in any case, I think we see this as a delaying tactic for them to try the same point that we've, had, we've, we've been successful on. Ten person, I'm on page, on point 18 of uh, the document where we deal with a couple of interlocutory applications uh, between the parties. Uh, I will not go through those uh, interlocutory applications, which is really said applications between the parties and again, we make the point that we feel that this is only going to delay the proceedings. Earlier on, the person, I did make uh, the point that NUM, after an intervention application, was admitted as a party to the proceedings, as well as Panky, uh, Trading CC, and 133 others have also a party to the proceedings. And um, the Mpumalanga Action Movement, which is one of um, the, the stakeholders in, in Mpumalanga, particularly from the Steve Chote municipality, have also entered um, the proceedings as a party. In fact, Chairperson, uh, I have submitted to Parliament, I think it was under a letter, letter um, dated, if I'm not mistaken, it's the 25th of June, where I showed for the freezing order, for the preservation application to be had, which we joined, we, we submitted a joint practice note with NUM, which was already a party to the proceedings at that point. But as we're sitting here, from the reading under interlocutor applications, you will notice, Chairperson, that um, NUM is one of the parties now who's opposing um, the preservation application and who have appealed. Um, now, moving along, I'm um, on point 24. Uh, in October, the directors of the Tegeta want to remove the BRPs in the OCM matter, and the date is yet to be uh, determined. I've already alluded to the Section 61 certificate, which still holds, uh, which is a certificate that the NDPP uh, submitted to, to the court to say that this matter must be handled expeditiously. And previously, as we, we said, Chairperson, the matter was had, although served on the parties, was really had expeditiously. It was had on a semi-agent basis. We've already approached um, the Deputy Judge President of the court and I've, I've attached the letter, very extensive letter that we, we've submitted to the court in October 22, asking the, the judge president to call a judicial case manager, which is another judge who will re really call the parties to a meeting um, and a timetable gets set. And all the parties who have not filed their papers, because you can see uh, most of the parties have not yet filed their papers. Ten percent to date here of, and even with the preservation application, we are yet to get any opposing affidavit which um, answers the question that the NTPP has filed. And the question is, the, we allege that the mine was bought with the proceeds of crime. Um, no one has filed the affidavit 
to dispute that. None of the parties have filed an affidavit to dispute that. The only thing that we are seeing is all these interlocutory applications, um, you know, which, which we say are, are going to delay the matter. Hence, we, we thought we should approach um, the deputy judge president of the court um, in terms of the section 61 uh, certificate that the NDPP has filed. Um, we, we think a uh, chairperson to, to, um, to the DJP that another judge must be appointed to make sure that all these interlocutory applications are dealt with exp expeditiously so that the forfeiture, which is the main application can be had. That's, that's our interest. Uh, in, in this matter. Um, then of course, Chairperson, uh, as well as sitting here, the, the curators already filed uh, four reports to the High Court. Um, they, they are accessible on case line. And throughout the reports, there's a recurring um, narrative around our concerns as the NDPP regarding uh, the condition of the mine, the, the, the water and waste management, safety and environmental issues, re rehabilitation, compliance, and, and funding thereof. We've already, um, we've also um, sent a letter to the Department of Minerals and, and Energy raising these very issues uh, that the curator has raised. Uh, in his reports, and, and those reports are part of the proceedings in court. Uh, another concern that we have, uh, Chairperson, which is the last point I want to really make about this case, is the fact that currently uh, the mine is run by mini pit operations. It's, it's just small little miners, if we could call it that. And uh, in the last report that uh, the curator has filed on the 8th of December, uh, which is I think last week Thursday, we are seeing that the presence of um, the mini pit operators um, is, is, is really eroding value. Um, according to the calculation of, of the curator bonus, uh, you know, mini pit operators have made approximately 6 billion. And we're inviting the BRPs to come to the party and explain to the court and the curator, because all these reports get filed in court, how much has been made by many uh, operators in the mine. Um, the, the BRPs have not submitted um, the contracts of the mini pit operators. They claim they don't have these contracts but they've been in charge of this mine, running this mine since 2018. And um, in this regard, we are headed for a full blown fight with the BRPs because we are now concerned about erosion of value as, as I've said to Chairperson. Um, I've, I've annexed um, the, the, the letter to, to the letter that we've submitted to Honorable Deputy Judge President on the 2nd of November, in fact, uh, um, were, um, were present regarding the fact that the matter must be set down for hearing uh, soon. We've also attached chairperson uh, the letter to the mine where we are raising the conditions of the mine to, to the Department of Minerals and Energy Chairperson. I will end uh, the report at this point and hand back to Advocate Dikok for, for the balance of the report on the Barberton um, Lily Mine inquest. Thank you, Chairperson and honorable members for the opportunity. Thank you, Advocate Dikok. Um, thank you very much, um, Advocate Rabaji. Uh, for, for the comprehensive report. Um, Chairperson, shall we proceed to the other matter um, at this point? I don't see any hands. Members, would you want to interact with this first part or would you want to allow Advocate Dukok to deal with the Lily Mine and then you ask questions? Let's deal with all of it first, Chair. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
Thank you very much, um, Chairperson and members of the committee. Um, Chairperson, regarding the tragedy at the Barberton Lily Mine, um, this incident occurred on the 5th of February 2016. Uh, at that point in time, uh, it appears as if the South African Police Services uh, did not open uh, an investigation into the matter. Um, uh, during April of 2019, uh, the family members of the missing minors uh, engaged with the South African Police Services at Lowe's Creek, and a inquiry docket was opened, according to the information that we received from the DPP of Pretoria. The reason for the SAPs not opening a case docket was that the matter was never reported to them by the man, mine management um, or the Department of Mineral and uh, of Mineral Resources, the DMR. According to the reports uh, that we received, uh, subsequent to this, the DPP office in Pretoria engaged uh, regarding the matter and requested that documentation be presented to the DPP office so that the matter could be prepared as an inquest. There was various engagements with the South African Police Services, and it appears that only on the uh, only uh, during October 2020 uh, was a formal case docket opened in relation uh, to the matter. Um, of course, from that point in time, uh, the case had to be prepared as a as an investigation, as a criminal investigation. Um, and this was subsequently done. A decision was then taken by the DPP office um, to prepare the matter as an inquest for the inquest uh, court uh, to determine whether any individual uh, or institution was responsible uh, for uh, the tragedy that occurred at the mine um, and on the assumption that the minors are deceased, whether any person can be held responsible uh, for the deaths of, 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 the, of the minors. So uh, the inquest has proceeded. Um, there's been various postponements of the inquest proceedings. Uh, we have been informed that the matter is now postponed until the 7th to the 10th of February 2023 at Barberton Magistrates Court. And uh, this is now for closing arguments in relation to the evidence that has been led. I must also add uh, that uh, we also arranged uh, through the prosecution that expert evidence would be led in relation to this matter. And all of that evidence has already been placed uh, before the inquest uh, court. So at this point in time, we uh, will await the outcome of the arguments and the closing arguments. The family members are also represented. Um, we will then await the outcome of those arguments. The case will then be postponed so that the inquest uh, presiding officer can consider all the evidence and uh, provide a judgment in relation to the issues for determination by the inquest court. So uh, Chairperson and members of the committee, uh, the further detail is set out in the letter that has been submitted to you, uh, but that is the brief input uh, from the prosecution side as far as the status of the inquest. A chairperson, as a last point, uh, we did uh, notice in the original letter that had been written by Kosatu that there was a concern raised regarding uh, the issue of the recovery of the, of the bodies of the, of the uh, minor deceased, uh, uh, the deceased minors. Unfortunately, 
um, this is not an issue that the MPA is able to comment on regarding, regarding that question. So if there are any um, uh, further uh, information uh, requested regarding that, uh, I would propose that those questions be directed to the South African Police Service and to the management of the mine itself. Uh, regarding the recovery of, of the, the bodies of the deceased miners. All in all, from our side as the prosecution, we are doing all in our power to keep the family members informed of the progress of the inquest, so that at least they can bring some closure at this stage as to the circumstances under which uh, this tragic in incident occurred. Thank you very much, Chairperson and members. Thank you very much, Advocate Tikok and Advocate Rasichaba. Uh, members, are there any questions or comments? I have Honorable Masako Tele, Honorable Swart, in that order, and Honorable Breitenbach. Uh, Honorable Masako Thank, Thank you very much, Chair. Good morning. Uh, DM and the team, and also our colleagues. Uh, Chair, let me just say we note and welcome the report, uh, but few things that one would really uh, like to have it clarity, Chair. I understand that the yes, the last presentation, the uh, subs. Uh, is is they are supposed to have uh, been invited chair, but because of the time, I think uh, because if you check, there are questions that they would have maybe assisted us with this matter, uh, chair. Because my concern, my main concern, chair, it is on the matter chair of release, uh, chair. It is the issue of the families. If you think of this time, Chair, Honorable Jale, we seem to have lost her. Uh, can we move Susie. to Honorable Jale? My network is bad this morning, Chair. Can you hear me? We can hear you now, but we could not hear part of what you were saying. You, I think the last thing we heard is that you are concerned about the families. Yes, Chair. And also the carelessness this matter has been handled with, Chair, particularly on the issue of the management of, of the mine management. Uh, Chair, if the case was just opened on to, uh, October 2020, after such a time when Chairperson, the, 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 the matter was long being on television and even the community wanted to take the matter on their hands, it shows how Chair, our people in the mines are subjected to uh, the, the status in which our people in the mine sector are subjected to Che. That matter is a very serious matter. Even the department itself the, here, Che, the, 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 there are questions as to how they handled this matter. Che, the, that is a, my comment on the issue of there will be any next meeting. The police has to come and also uh, uh, give us their side of the story on this matter also. But also going to the issue of our, which is on our department. Uh, Chair, there has been a concern that uh, cases are being delayed. Uh, it seems as if deliberately. I think there are cases that has to be uh, given priority, Chair, particularly such cases. If we are going to allow uh, 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 the tracking of such matters, it is really causing problems with the communities. Uh, it is it's very much unfortunate 
chair that even the directors, these directors, they might be having salaries. Where we are, chair, they are maybe they might be having, I don't know how is this thing working, but I don't know if maybe they are having salaries, but they have lots of cash on their side when they, the community is, 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 is uh, lingering there without any help uh, in terms of a, a provision chair. So we are the NPA. Is it on from your side? Is there any way that you can speed up this matter? I know there are other obstacles, Chair, that uh, they are not on their hand, matters that they cannot handle. Is there any possibility that maybe they can, when we reopen, because already it's late, that they can try to push up, push more from their side? Uh, I don't know get into more details because they have given us and we appreciate the matter, the, 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 the information that they given us. Can we just find out from them that can they next year put this matter on their first priority also amongst the issues? Can I say Honorable Chair, Honorable Chair, Honorable Chair, are you done? Yes, I'm done. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Swart. Okay, thank you very much and greetings to you all. Um, just please uh, warn me if the connection is lacking my side. Firstly, um, from our side, we are saddened uh, by the tragic events at the Lily Mines and the lack of closure for the families of those deceased miners. And our thoughts and prayers are with those families. And it is regrettable that it has taken so long um, one does presume as well that the, um, not only the role of the mines, but the role of the Department of Minerals as well into investigating what occurred there, what steps were taken there. And we appreciate the fact that there is now an inquest, um, why it's taken so long, we will need the police to advise us. So we appreciate what the NPA is doing in that regard. When it comes to the issue of the optimum, I think we first need to commend the NPA on this preservation order, on the two orders, which are the biggest in the history of the NPA. And I think this matter, we need to bear in mind, this matter goes back, as the documents indicate, to the Public Protector's Report. It also goes back to the Parliamentary Oversight Report, which made a lot of findings in this regard. And let us just bear in mind that that was um, ATC in November of 2018, and that report was accepted by Parliament, which suggested criminal investigations, suggested every possible act um, arising from a lot of irregularities at ESCOM, and in particularly highlighting the Tegeta Gupta link with the Optimum Mine that resulted in this situation for the mine workers that they faced with. Now, we also understand that retrenchment took place of the mine workers in 2018. Um, that, that occurred so that the workers could obtain their pension benefits. And of course, as indicated by the NPA, that many are hoping to be reemployed. We appreciate that. However, what, what, what is very important is there seems to be a contradiction between the National Union of Mine Workers and Cosatu's position when it comes to the delays that are being that are being occurred in this matter. When it comes to the finalization of the forfeiture orders, they are I understand now from the briefing that the National Union of Mine Workers is appealing the preservation orders and the forfeiture orders, and that in itself is going to further delay the finalization of this matter. I understand fully, Chair, what the Honorable Maseko Jelly indicates about speeding up this matter. I've read the documentation. I've seen the efforts by the NPA with meetings, with management meetings, with the Deputy Judge President to try to reach finality. But you can rest assured that every step of this process is going to be appealed because you've now got the Gupta Tegeta uh, grouping involved, you've got the business rescue practitioners, 
that have got that are involved. You've got the curators that are involved. You've got a, a, a litany of litigants that are involved in in these matters, and obviously all of them want to prevent, uh, besides the curator, uh, want to prevent this forfeiture order going through because it would mean the state takes possession of this optimum mine and the optimum coal terminal, which is the access to the Richards Bay terminal, which is very lucrative. And I think the, in the briefing, it was uh, made very clear that, the, that it would result in this, this mine and the share in the Richards Bay coal terminal going straight back to the Guptas. And that cannot be allowed given the findings that both Parliament brought out as well as the Zondo report. So Chair, I, I just wanted to make mention of that, that we appreciate the impact on communities. We appreciate that, but we, we would need maybe a further briefing from, for example, the role, what, what is the minerals department doing? I'm, I'm deeply concerned about the report by the curator as to the possible asset stripping at the mine. And at the end of the day, it could well be that by the time the forfeiture order goes through all the different appeals, that there's nothing left. I'm concerned about the fact that it appears that this whole, the shell in, in in both the, the optimum mine and the optimum coal terminal um, is being sold for a nominal value of one rand. These are some of the issues we, we, we need clarity on, but at this stage, my view is the NPA is doing the very best they can under very difficult environment to protect this asset, this preservation order, and from my background, I was involved in the ESCOM inquiry. We made findings about lawfulness. It is very clear that they have a very, very strong case on the forfeiture. So Chair, that from my view at this stage. And one other point that I would like to make is that these were not the only miners that lost their employment. As part of the parliamentary inquiry, it was very apparent that Exora mines were closed down, and that in the particular, there's a mine at Arno Power Station where 1,500 mine workers lost their job, their jobs, and that to allow the Tegeto Optimum to supply coal to Arno. I don't remember the mine, and I stand under correction, but I don't remember the same attention being given to that aspect as to what we are receiving now. And it is highly regrettable. At the end of the day, mine workers are the pawns in what was this state capture project. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Lennis Petenbach. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Good morning to everybody. Um, I'm largely covered by the, the previous two members, but, and forgive me if this question has been answered, I was um, thrown off the platform once or twice, and so I missed some of Mr. de Kock's presentation. Um, my concern is that there appears to me to be, uh, while I understand the frustrations of the, of the NPA, because the, the whole matter does not lie within their purview, um, I'm concerned about what appears to me to be a lack of synergy between, between the NPA and the police. I would expect where a, a matter of this nature to be under the control of a prosecutor who would direct uh, who would direct the investigations, direct the processes, and in that way make sure that um, I'm talking about the the criminal matter now uh, as a result of the inquest. Um, I would expect a, a prosecutor to be more in control uh, and be able to determine or have more influence over the process uh, and get it done uh, more quickly. Um, so if, if somebody could just uh, explain to me why there appears to be this lack of synergy between the prosecution and the police in this regard. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Pretenbach. Uh, Honorable Jaila, is that a second? Is that an old hand or a new hand? It, it's a new hand, Chair. I just wanted to find out one thing, if maybe they do have, because I missed a, a lot of some 
uh, bite on the on the on the presentation because of network. The issue of those bodies, uh, do they have any information in terms in terms of are we have they just closed that matter that uh, 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 the bodies won't be found? They cannot take in, uh, those uh, bring them to their families. Che, like like getting those bodies. I don't know which term can I use. Are we closing that matter? Have that closed, the matter closed, been closed? If they have information from their side, can can one hear that? Yeah. Thank you very much, Honorable Swart. No, sorry, Chair. The one aspect that I omitted to mention was the letter that the NPA addressed to the Department of Minerals and Resources on the 14th of November, almost a month ago, expressing their deep concerns um, about um, safety and environmental issues, waste management and rehabilitation at the Optimum Mine. And to date, there's been no response. And it could be that we, given the fact that this is a, a preservation orders have been issued, that it could be a forfeiture of the, the significant assets run into billions of rands to the state. It is in our interests to exercise oversight over this to assist the NPA. And it could be that if they do not receive a speedy response and a, a satisfactory response, that we in the new year could call the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy um, to account to us as to what is being done to protect that asset. Um, when one goes back in history and, and one looks at the role of mineral resources and energy in state capture and ESCOM and the mines at Optimum, there's a lot to be desired on the, on the role of that department. But I think in this particular instance, it could be that we could be of assistance to the NPA as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Honorable Rettenbach, is that a new hand or an old hand? No, sorry, Chair, it's an old hand. Thank you very much. Uh, um, thank you very much, members. Can I hand over to Advocate Tukok and Advocate Sarasi Chaba? Thank you very much, um, Chairperson. I'll deal first with uh, some of the follow-up uh, questions regarding the mine. So I think we must bear in mind that the, that the circumstances of this, of this tragic in, in, incident happened within the confines of the mine's operations. And so the competent authority uh, to investigate the mine incident uh, was the Department of, of um, Minerals. Uh, uh, they were responsible to do the investigation in relation to the mine. Um, according to the information we received, uh, the uh, report that they, that they prepared flowing from the investigation was submitted on the 15th of March, 2018 uh, to the DPP. Now, this is a standard practice uh, when there's an incident in the workplace, uh, the law requires that the DPP office be furnished with a report. So, so that would have been at the stage at which the DPP office formally received um, a, a report in relation to the incident. As can be seen from the report, the DPP office immediately then engaged uh, with the police. Um, and although initially an inquiry docket had been opened in 2016, it was only then subsequent to this report from the department that a formal case docket had been opened. So I think to answer the question also of Honorable Breitenbach, the prosecutor on from that point onwards, the DPP office would have been driving the issues around the investigation, both from a labor point of view and in terms of the Occupational Health and Safety Act, and from a criminal point of view, in terms of whether or not there were anyone responsible uh, for, for this unfortunate tragedy from a criminal point of view. But I want to assure the committee that the DPP was fully apprised of this matter when it came to the attention of the DPP um, at national office, we have been requesting various reports and we've also been assisting the DPP 
to ensure that there is uh, expert uh, evidence available. We're there, we've had consultations with the Department of Justice that's been assisting as far as, as, far as a gathering of the expert witnesses and the prosecutors uh, that's been assigned both in the lower court and the prosecutor from the DPP office have been driving the matter to where it is now. So the point I'm making is after receipt of the initial report, in all earnestness, the prosecution um, drove the conclusion of the investigation so that we could commence the inquest. And that's where we are. Uh, the point uh, that Honorable Jelly makes about whether we can speed up this process, we certainly will, will do that. Uh, we will ensure that the case is fully argued uh, during February when we return, um, that all the parties are ready uh, so that there can be a proper ventilation of the arguments in court. And, and then it's in the hands of the, of the inquest magistrate. I'm sure um, after February, a short a, a date will be given by the magistrate uh, to come back with the, with the inquest findings. At least then one will then be able to make a determination of liability. And I'm sure that flowing from, and this is the court will then have listen to all the evidence, including issues around whether or not the bodies can be recovered. And I think that once we receive that judgment of the court, uh, everyone will be in a much better position to understand how best to take this forward on behalf of the families, on behalf of all concerned, and whether anyone should be held responsible for the delays that have occurred um, in the matter initially. So I think that's just to conclude um, those issues relating to the Lily Mine. Thank you, Chair. Um, I can then hand over to Advocate uh, Rabaji to continue with, um, with the issues regarding uh, the Optima Mine. Thank you. Advocate Rabaji. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Advocate de Kock. Um, I think, Chairperson, the, the observations that are made by Honorable Member Swart are spot on. We, we really find the role um, that is played by NUM very contradictory. I, I have personally said with them, as I've said, Steve Stratton Municipality, uh, the workers that are currently working in the mini pits, NUM, um, Mpumalanga Action Movement, all have come to VGM with petitions. Um, and initially they were all concerned about the plight of the workers. Um, and hence, when we had served the uh, preservation application, the, the, the NUM intervened and um, they became part to the proceedings and we filed a, um, a joint practice note before the matter was set to make the point that we're on the same side, this matter must be um, must be finalized expeditiously. And, and the prevention of organized crime uh, makes it possible that with the preservation order within 90 days, you file a forfeiture order and um, the proceedings can be concluded that fast. But for them to then now turn back and, and oppose the application, it's, it's, we, it's, it's not in accordance with the initial uh, stance they have taken. So um, we, we therefore, I think this matter, it's something that can be flagged with COSAT in terms of the discontradictory positions that we find. Um, I think we will definitely as, as NPA really um, embraced and and we're appealing to to the committee to, to help us um again as observed uh, by the honorable member the role that has been played by the department in making sure that this mine was gold was sold to the guptas and and right at the beginning as, as the reports indicated previously and and the the role today they're playing of of indifference, we really find it very difficult. We don't understand how we're going to proceed under those circumstances. This is an asset that rightfully belongs to the people of South Africa, and we we really would like assistance that the department helps NPA 
that the, the, the value of the mine is preserved, particularly around the issues that we've raised with them in a letter. We are yet to, to even get an acknowledgement of receipt from, um, from the department in this regard. Um, Chairperson, although the letter to, I just want to make the point that although the letter to uh, the, 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 the minutes of the meeting with the DJP, uh, Judge Lidoava is dated November. We, we have been communicating with his office until we got that meeting. So in from September, October, we've been asking for a, a meeting with a, the DJP so that he can allocate a judge to, to manage this case to conclusion and, and we'll continue in our endeavors to make sure that uh, the forfeiture application is had. As, 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 as I've said before, there is no room in prevention of organized crime that the proceedings should be delayed between preservation and forfeiture. Um, so we, we are waiting and we're going to make follow up with the Deputy Judge President. Thank you, Shepherds. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Advocate uh, Rasichab. Um, Deputy Minister, your closing remarks. Uh, Chair, no, and um, good morning to the members um, and to the uh, officials from the NPA. Uh, as I'd said, I'm, uh, it's a matter that the NPA is dealing with. I note that the letter from Kasatu uh, to yourself was also addressed to the Minerals and Energy Portfolio Committee. I, I know it is often difficult for committees to um, actually, sorry, it was addressed to, to the speaker and the chief whip of the majority party. Um, but it was specifically that um, the matters be referred to the portfolio committees responsible for mineral resources and energy, as well as justice and, and correctional services. Um, so I, I hope that some of the issues, concerns relating to um, mineral uh, and minerals and energy will will be dealt with by that committee, and that you will possibly uh, liaise with the chair of that that committee. Um, uh, yeah, but but for my side, I mean, it's it's was it's the NPA's um, uh, the NPA is dealing with the issue. It was for them to report, which they've done. And um, hopefully, members are satisfied with their the report on their action. Thanks, Chair. No, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister. Thank you, members, and to the delegation from the NPA. I think it's quite clear that uh, um, uh, work is being done, especially on the side of the NPA, and that they are not the only parties to some of these issues especially with regard to the optimum mine and even the other one. Um, but uh, with regard to optimum mine, we will write a letter to the speaker, in fact, a, a report about this meeting and further request that uh, the, uh, the speaker uh, interact with the Portfolio Committee on Minerals and Energy um, to ensure that uh, things like asset, asset stripping are, are, are avoided as best as can be uh, possible. And that uh, I think from our side, I do not see um, a reason to have another meeting because most of the issues are issues that are part of the judicial processes. Other matters are being appealed. Uh, at the SCA or some we are waiting, uh, in the NPA is, is, is going to be, uh, um, they, they'll be making closing statements, I think in February on the Lily Farms on the inquest. So those matters are prescribed by the law. Uh, but what is key is that uh, we ask the speaker, um, to engage with labor because labor was one of the committees that was also asked to look at matters as they pertain to workers um, as to how they must be assisted. 
um, but most of the bulk of the work that needs to be done uh, needs to be dealt with by the Department of Minerals uh, and, uh, and Energy. Uh, so we will write that, re that report uh, uh, to the speaker that a special focus uh, be, uh, be made uh, by the department by the portfolio committee and the department of minerals minerals and energy to ensure that uh, some of the matters uh, especially, uh, some of the matters that uh, are outstanding there uh, the department attends to to all of those issues honorable sort chair i agree with your approach but may i just add that should the npa um, not receive assistance from the department and possibly the portfolio committee might not um, of minerals and energy not be quick enough in responding would it be untoward to to invite the npa to come back to us as well so that we can uh, possibly have a joint meeting or raise that with minerals and energy because as of as we've indicated this is a very important preservation and forfeiture this is the biggest in the history of the npa and we don't want that to be frustrated um, by a department or possibly a, another portfolio committee that might not respond quick enough. Um, I, I just wanted your guidance in that regard as to, to invite the NPA to come back to us should they receive uh, problems in that area. Thank you, Jane. Thank you very much. That is why we are writing a report to the speaker and the expectation is that the speaker would, uh, in a way, through the house chair project manage the portfolio committee on minerals and energy to ensure that they do make the necessary follow-ups but if there is no response from either the portfolio committee in fact either no if there is no response from the department uh, by march the npa can come back to us and then we will take the matter up uh, with the speaker who who through the house chair can ensure that there is a joint uh, a committee that is justice and minerals and energy. But because we are assigned by the speaker to make this follow up, we must write the, 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 the report to the speaker with the issues that we have raised here as issues that the speaker needs to focus on. Will that be in order? Yes. yes. I think I agree. And Chair, I think it, I, I would support uh, Honorable Swart that the matter, we have to watch it very close and make sure that it, it gets uh, the attention it deserves. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. So we are expecting an update from the NPA that um, on the 1st of March, if you have not received anything, even if you have, but you update us as to how especially uh, uh, matters are proceeding with respect to the issues uh, that you raised about uh, environmental issues, asset trip, uh, stripping, all of those issues that uh, by the 1st of March, you give us a, an updated report. And if there is no movement by the department, you also indicate as such. Members, thank you very much. I think the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very Thank much, you, Chair. Thank you very much, members. We, we note we note the date, and we will we will prepare the updates as required. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you next year. Thank you very Blessings much. To all. Thank, you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, DM. Thank you, honourable members. Thank you very much. Thank you.